Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie. It's another glorious Sunday and today is the Sunday sermon. And I just want to read something. I've been feeling like there's a lot of overflow taking place. I remember we did a 12 blessings. We did a video on 12 blessings. Actually, I think we, we broke them down and we did three, three blessings. And so one of the blessings I feel, maybe I just better just recap on what the blessings were. The blessings were... I think there was salvation, healing, and deliverance that went together. Then there was obedience, restoration, and establishment. Then there was overflow, abundance, and fruitfulness, God's glory, honor, and power. So today I want to deal with overflow. But what was interesting about the 12 blessings is that it had to be a flow. So there was salvation, healing, and deliverance working together. Because when we get saved, we get healed, and we get delivered. And that has to work together so that now we move into obedience, restoration, and apostolic and prophetic establishment. When we begin, when, when the salvation, healing, deliverance process is over, and even maybe during, some of them will overlap, we begin to obey God. We just begin to hear his voice. We begin to obey what he's telling us because according to Isaiah 119, it says that if you're if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the fruit of the land. So we know that fruitfulness and favor and God's grace and overflow is equated to obedience. It cannot be done outside obedience to God. So there's obedience, then there's restoration. Because obedience brings about, it triggers a lot of restoration in our lives. And I know because of what we have studied and the revelations God has given us, this restoration and all these things that are taking place are taking place for us spiritually, solically, physically, socially, financially, in terms of governance, leadership and governance, professionally, and even in different geographical locations. So this is taking place. And then um, with the obedience and restoration, there's establishment, you know, that God establishes that which he has, that which you have obeyed and he has restored, he begins to establish. But today I wanted to talk about overflow. Now that process begins overflow. And you know, I love when, even when God was giving me that download, I was like, it all sounds the same. Overflow, abundance, and fruitfulness, but it's not, but it's all related. So let's just read some scriptures, which I wanted to read, to talk us and to get us aligned to the season of overflow. And it says in Ephesians 3, the verse is, um, is I think, 20, but I want to read the context because it's important to read scripture in context. So from verse 14, it says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I love that, you know. So sort of to get into overflow, it's, this is supporting what I've just said. There has to be an alignment with you, a recognition that your name and every family gets its name from God, from the Father. And it says that I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power, through his spirit in your inner being. And you know, I love this because it, it confirms what I'm always saying, that things must resonate with your spirit. That also um, your spirit man is a very strong person. It, it, your spirit man can advise you things that you have no education on, you have no advice on, but it is your spirit that is speaking. But here he's saying, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit, in your be inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So, you know, that can be a whole sermon, you know. And also it reminds me of the song for the season, You Are My Strength, you know. And it's saying you're my strength. And, and in this season, the strength of God reaches you. In order for us to have overflow, we need God's strength. And we need that strength to reach our inner being. But here's a scripture that backs it, that we can even pray it, you know. I pray that out of his glorious riches, God may strengthen us with power through his spirit in our inner being. So through his spirit working in us, which just confirms everything I've said. Salvation, healing, deliverance. Gives birth to obedience, Restoration establishment gives birth to our topic of today, overflow, abundance, and fruitfulness. So if you're not experiencing overflow, let's go back. You know, I always tell people, take 10 steps backwards, examine the situation. What does it look like? What's not right with this picture? What am I not doing right? What do I need to get right? You know, have I been, have I, am I born again? Yes. And you know, even in salvation, it's possible to be saved and not experiencing everything God has. You know, I always love the analogy that I was given. It's like when we first get saved, when you when you have visitors or friends who come to your house and they can't get past the sitting room. They just come, they visit you in the sitting room, that's that. But as your relationship develops, as intimacy uh, or friendship develops, relationship develops, maybe sometimes they can go to the kitchen. They are friends of mine even and yours who are even able to visit my bedroom. But there are people who can't. That is a salvation experience that is evolving 
and unfolding. You are growing in intimacy with God. You're growing in relationship with God. You have knowledge of him. He has knowledge of you. You are learning each other. Something is growing. Something is shifting. So salvation cannot be at a standstill. It must be changing. It must be sort of diversing. It must be flowing into different, I feel like, spaces and crevices. It's like a river finding its space. The salvation experience cannot be stagnant. It has to keep moving until you experience the fullness, which they call, I think sometimes, soteria or shalom, you know, the peace of God, the, the fullness of God's salvation, where you know him, you know his secrets, you're able to enter his bedroom, you're able to do all sorts of things. Anyway, and I pray that you're being rooted and established in love, you know, that's another thing. For overflow to come, we must be, we must be rooted and established in God's love, and that we may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, I love this, to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Oh, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. Back to my song. Because my song is that the song of you are my strength says that in the fullness of his grace, he will lift you. In the power of his name, he'll lift you up. And I love this. This is such a, such a, 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 a loving statement in order for us to experience overflow. We must first be overflowing with Christ's love. We must be overflowing with Christ in us and in our spirit and in everything to do with us. We must be overflowing with the love the, and, and the knowledge that God loves us. He loves us greatly. And there's nothing he desires more for us than that overflow. And I feel like this is a, a position and an embrace for you to receive the overflow of God. Yeah. And now it says, now comes the overflow scripture. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. So I love that. That is a whole spiel about God is able to do immeasurably more, more than all we can ask or imagine. So I think sometimes I like to challenge leaders, write down. All that you can ask or imagine God, all you think that you can ask, all that you can imagine that God can do for you, write it down. And it says now, because of his spirit being one with your spirit, he's able to do immeasurably more than all you can ask, all you can imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. You know, sometimes I used to read that scripture, and that's why I like going back to, to reading a lot of scripture properly, because I used to say that scripture, sometimes we say it exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or imagine. But I love this piece that says, according to the power that is in work within us, which again confirms, in order for there to be overflow, there has to be salvation, there has to be healing, there has to be deliverance, there has to be obedience, there has to be restoration. There has to, God has to establish what he wants and is working in you apostolically and prophetically. And the backing of that, he says that his church is built on the apostle and the prophet with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. So the establishment is apostolic, it is prophetic, and it is with Jesus Christ. And then it establishes God's will and God's purpose. And then we begin to experience God's overflow. And again, according to this scripture, it's saying, according to Ephesians 3, I think from verse 14 to 20, it's saying first, there's a build up, there's a connection with us. Our spirit and God's spirit are connecting. So when the, our spirit and God's spirit are connecting and he's giving us that power, then now we're able to flow. We're able to flow in overflow. We're able to flow in God's purpose. We're able to flow in all that he has desired for us. And I think just before I end that, I just want to decree and make a reference um, from Psalm 23 that says that you prepare a table before me, that's verse 5, in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Just as a closing to overflow, you know, that this is God's desire for us. He, he desires to, to prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He desires to anoint our head with oil and he desires for overflow. Um, I want us to go back to our scripture, which was from Ephesians 3. The emphasis is verse 20, but we read from verse 14 that says that um, there's a way that God is working on our inner man 
so that we can experience that overflow. And it always, it also reminds me when I say that uh, with great wealth comes great responsibility, that, that even as we're overflowing, and you see, wealth is not just financial, there's spiritual wealth. So we're overflowing with spiritual wealth. We're overflowing spiritually. We're overflowing solely, that's our mind, our will, our emotions. We're overflowing physically. We have health, we have sleep, we have discipline, we have good manners, um, we, are over, we have ethics, we have uh, values. We're overflowing also socially, our social interactions, our relationships, our engagements, our reputations. We are overflowing financially. We are overflowing um, also in terms of leadership and governance, um, governance of self, governance of others. There's an overflow there as well. And also we are overflowing professionally in terms of things to do with our career, our market spaces, our interaction with market spaces and marketplaces. And also we are overflowing in different geographical locations. So I really pray that you experience a season of overflow and that God's glory is with you in this season and um, that you reflect on it, meditate upon it. And my prayer is that we all experience God's overflow in all areas of our life. But before I pray, let me pray for salvation because it's so key even to today's message that we can't do anything without the salvation of God. It all starts uh, with salvation. And when we unlock that, then we await. And then, you know, I've also seen people, who, you get impatient with the process. No, submit to the process, enjoy the process, smell the coffee, smell the roses on the journey. You know, sometimes we're so concerned about our destination that we don't even enjoy the journey that is getting us there. You know, let's also... Be focused on the destination, understand that there's a destination, but enjoy the process of getting there on that destination. So um, let us pray and uh, do the salvation prayer. Um, so please say after me, uh, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, to be the Lord and Savior of my life. I'm asking you to come into my life because I want your spirit and my spirit to be one. And I want your spirit and mine to flow and to be full of love and to feel your overwhelming love and your overwhelming embrace. And so that in my life, you can do as your scripture says, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I could ever ask or imagine according to the power of God that is working in me. So I need your power working in me. Therefore, I connect my spirit with yours so that the power of God may flow at ease and we can accomplish everything that you have desired through me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And now let us pray. Father, we bless you. I know we call you the God of the overflow. And I want to decree, Father, Lord, according to Ephesians 3, verse 20, that, Father, you do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or imagine, Father, through the power of God that works in us. So there's a measure of God's power. And that power is working in us. It is working out love. It is working out our salvation. It is working out healing. It is working out deliverance. It is working out obedience. It's working out restoration. It's working out apostolic and prophetic establishment, bringing us to a season of overflow. And in the season of overflow, even in Psalm 23, you have said that I will prepare before you a table before your enemies. I will anoint your head with oil and there will be an overflow. So I pray, Father Lord, that there is an overflow in all areas of our life. I decree there is an overflow for us spiritually, solically, physically, socially, financially, governmentally, geographically, and professionally. I decree that we experience overflow as individuals, as families, as the youth, as children, um, in our businesses, in our marketplaces, in our market spaces. I pray for an overflow of your glory and presence in the nation of Kenya, in the name of Jesus. And I decree that this is a season of overflow. We prepare for it. Some of us are preparing, we're getting ready for that overflow. Some of us are in the overflow, therefore we need wisdom, we need strategy on how to execute the overflow that you have given to us in the name of Jesus Christ. So we honor you, Lord, and we step boldly into our season of overflow. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.